And from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. God bless every one of you that are under the sound of my voice. We are living in a very serious time. Men and women have become commodities, even in the United States. There is such a thing as human trafficking, where men, women, boys, girls are harvested from the population and they are sent, sometimes locally, sometimes into other countries. However, there is another number, millions, who have found themselves sitting in a C-E-L-L. A cell. A cell is a holding place. A place where people inside the cell cannot exit except someone else opens the door. God, being all wise, and all-powerful has in these last days raised voices. A voice is used for an alert, sounding an alarm, establishing a need, and also sending the word. The scripture says the word was made flesh. So when the word is sent by God, that means that Jesus is showing up. Even though people may be sitting in a jail or prison cell, that doesn't mean that their minds and their spirits, their hearts, are in prison. There are people that are sitting in a jail cell that are more free in their minds than people that are walking every day out on the street. Why? Because those people that sit in jail cells that have sought God, that have called on God, that have asked God to intervene for them, they have repented of their sins. They have repented of their wrongdoing. And they have asked God to move on their behalf. Those people have found the liberty that is in Christ. And truth makes people free. The truth of the matter is that there are people living in a nation who was founded, which I should say was founded to pop, be populated for those who wanted liberty and freedom. But at the same time, after the growth, they become, became people who decided that instead of paying for uh, different uh, production and paying for different work to be done, they decided that they would capture people and use the humans as slaves. People who would not have to be paid even so, there are people now 
who are living under very adverse circumstances who are not truly paid. And it has been found that there are those that sit in a cell who were not supposed to be there in the first place. Why? Because they are innocent. And then you have others who have served their time so far as they were found guilty and they were guilty, but they have served their time, but yet are sitting in a cell. Well, the population is mixed. And it is mixed of a group called victims. There are people who are victims of circumstances such as really housing situations where housing is not adequate. Then you have those who are victims of the lack of proper education. Education is something that has to change. Information grows. Information is discovered. And so that means that education has to change. But if education doesn't change for a particular number of people or a select ethnic group, that means that that particular group will not excel as those who have received the information, education, and the goods and the Things by which they can excel. So, you have a ladder. Some at a higher rung than others. Well, that means that those at the bottom of the rung have to make a decision. Are they going to stay at the bottom or are they going to get off the ladder. There are people that get off the ladder and they end up in another group where they have formed their own thing inside of a nation. And sometimes what is formed is against the law. Sometimes it isn't. There are times that people have formed things very successful within the limitations of the law. But those who have found themselves outside of the law, they also become of a population, another part of a population, a population within themselves. What is being said? Jesus spoke. When I was in prison, you visited me not. What was Jesus saying and what was his parable at that time? He was bringing attention to the fact that there are people who have become one with him because of their entering into the kingdom of God by way of repentance. And that's what Jesus said. Repent. Amen. One time the scripture says, repent and be converted. Repent and believe the gospel. Amen. That is a, those are the uh, two prerequisites for entering into the kingdom of God. And there are people that are sitting laying, standing in prison who have done that. But yet, even though 
and there those, as I said before, whose time has been served. Some were never supposed to be there in the first place because they're in, innocent. But they are those that are still incarcerated. So, believers in God will pray. And this is what people have done. And when people pray, that causes the kingdom of heaven to move in the behalf of the kingdom of God. And some of the kingdom of God is a man. They are in the earth realm. Yes. Sitting and waiting. So God has stirred those in the kingdom of God who are in what is called ministry. And so when God alerts us, stirs us, then we are to move in the behalf of whatever the issue is. And this is what is being done today. Those of you that hear this podcast, the word of the Lord would say unto all of us, we've got to do two things in order to move in the behalf of those who are in prison, who are in Christ. And some have not yet totally surrendered, but yet they have the wherewithal to call on God. Yes, they repent and call on God. So therefore, God is moving in their behalf that someone would do two things, as I said. Two words, get up. We have to get up. We've got to get up the more concerning people that are in prison. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me this day, earlier, before presenting this podcast. He just spoke one word, prisons. Prisons. Then the Spirit of God began to stir me. I began to look at what has been in the news What is documented concerning prisons? Finding out millions are there. Thousands are being used as laborers for corporations who profit by extra cheap labor. Excuse me. So what are we to do? Well, it's one thing that we have to do, as I said, we have to get up. We have to do the three words, arise and shine. We just have to. The light of what God has put in us has to go to those that are in need. And light does more than one thing. Light causes a way to be able to be seen. And then Jesus has announced concerning his people that we are the light of the world. We have the answer. So the answer that is in Christ, in us, we must get it to where it can be effective that people can live, amen, and move and have their being in the Lord with liberty and justice while God is moving in the behalf of these people, amen. Let's continue to pray and let's continue to Move in that direction. God, in the name of Jesus, we praise you for the Holy Ghost. We ask you now for divine direction. Lead us with the exact answers and the exact way that the wherewithal and that the means would be, O God, at hand. And that we will see the fruit 
as labor is done in this direction. And we'll praise you now and we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Well, amen. This is Apostle Jean Morris coming to you today from the IGAP Network. Another branch that God is strengthening. Amen. He's strengthening our voice. And he is, amen, causing us to be in his flow. That those things that are part of his agenda at this time, that they will go forward. You know, there was a woman once even though the need was outside of actually her realm of where she was, but she was called on to move in the behalf of a need. Prayer is a wonderful force, but action many times has to move and accompany and be the results of prayer. In the time of Esther, she told her uncle, I'm going to fast and you have people, the women to fast for me and with me. She did that. But then along with the fasting, Something else had to be done. Action had to begin to move. After the fast, she got up, went to the king, and started the process of eliminating the spirit of murder that was against her people. Amen to all the Esthers that are praying. But there's another step. Those that will, we've got to get up and we've got to move forward in the behalf of those that are on the spirit of Haman, on that hit list. Well, God bless you, beloved. Love you. Pray for me.